You see, the ideal ministering is to lead someone into a circumstance that's going to be a blessing to them, not be the blessing to them. My wives constituted being the blessing to me, and me to them, you see, as husband. That's not the way. The way is what we do with our children. Gosh, he's in bad company. How can I change the company so that he'll have good influence in his life? Which is not the same as me teaching him. But me doing something in his life that takes him into an environment that's going to reveal to him more about his relationship with his God. Not be so helpful and such a good teacher that I become the God, which is what Christianity has done with Jesus. It's ended up worshipping him and has a theology that says, well, he is God and therefore it's okay. It's not okay. Don't worship the messenger. If you have a minister, you're in great danger of treating him with such awe and respect that he eclipses God very quickly, no matter what he's saying, because you see him as the fount of all wisdom and help and blessing. I must emphatically say you must not have a guru. I mean, I must say it so emphatically as to more than rival what religion insists on, whether it be in a very low level, uh, we respect the minister, he's the elder and all that rubbish. He's not. He's your equal, like Jesus in the story. You may think this is an absurd thing to say. How can I have Jesus as my equal? That's exactly the problem I'm talking about. You can only see him as God. That's a disaster. You should only see God as God. Not the messenger. Not the writer. Not the one recording not the minister, not the elder, not your advisor, your confidant, your a mentor. Oh, it's a disaster. Repeated so many ways, so many times in the history of man. We settled for the messenger, the substitute. It's an insidious sort of mistake that we elevate the teacher. So Jesus is emphatic, call no man teacher, master, Lord, God, goodness gracious. One is your God, your Father in heaven, him only shalt thou serve. Serve is a bit old fashioned, isn't it? Him only shalt thou love. Children are very simplistic. They have a best friend. It's not a good idea because we should love and care for all our friends and those that are not because they desperately need us for souls. If you're going to have a best friend, your only solution is to make sure it's God. Nothing else will do. Especially if God personifies a loving Heavenly Father who cares for all His creation and that He created all. There may still be pitfalls, I'm not sure what they can be, a misunderstanding of God. 
and then we have to trust him that he'll show us. Like I was looking for yesterday evening. What am I doing wrong? It's a Job story. It's nothing to do with what you're doing wrong, Marshall. Of course you're doing things wrong. That may always be the case relative to God. It's what you're not doing that's right. What is right is to have him as your best friend, if you like. The first commandment, the first principle of life is a bit more than that, you know. It's loving with all, not just a priority. All. That's a bit radical, isn't it? What does that leave for the wife? Well, nothing, really. I mean, let me just explore this point. Other than the fact I want her to be saved too. But then I want all life to be saved. Why? Because I want nothing to suffer. Yeah, I agree with the Buddha in that regard. I'm utterly against suffering. But I'm not against the suffering that leads us to life eternal. Leads us to full glory, loveliness, if you like, full life. Some difficulties are a great blessing to me. You know, I had a difficulty a few moments ago. I couldn't remember what to start this tiny recording with. I knew I had something in mind, but I'd lost it by the time I picked up the phone. I mean, that quick. What's the point I want to make? And then, then I thought, well, I'll relax. It will come to me, and it did. It's that even the minister turns out to be a guru very quickly. And you sought ministry. No wonder God kept you out of it, for goodness sake. It would have been a disaster. You're not meant to be a minister. You're meant to be there that blesses people. Well, in the sense that you help them to life eternal as you want your, for yourself. Be careful of being the way for them because they'll worship you, not God. And that's not the way, is it? No, of course not. Even I have enough humility to recognize that. <laughs> I'm not the most humble of men, you might think. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. How sad for a great attempt at humility, Marshall. Hmm. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> you're most emphatically not called to ministry you're not called to be the perfect husband the perfect dad the perfect friend God is our perfect nothing else and that's safe why? because our view of God encompasses that he loves and cares for all And that's our ideal, to be one with him in this regard. Not to cloud the issue by getting between the one we're trying to help and God. But rather, if anything, pushing him from behind. <laughs> Not in the way. <laughs> Not in the way trying to pull him and drag him in. But, well, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a kitty at school I was teaching, a, you know, 15, 16-year-old, uh, no, 17-year-old, and uh, he was very good at things, very bright. And I thought, well, I found out, how is he so motivated? And he said to me, well, Mum and Dad realised I was playing with the kids locally and that they weren't good company from the point of view of a successful life. So they, they sent me for tennis practice. Tennis, not football or rugby or something, or just scrapping it in the street with them. And I became, you know, one 
the leaders in, in, in New Zealand for youth um, tennis playing. And he was, you see, he's, he's, he's an outstanding tennis player. But of course it took him into a different company, uh, a company that was highly motivated kids, I expect. And he became highly motivated and very capable at school. I didn't want him to be an economist. I thought, oh, I don't want to waste him in this. <laughs> I want him to be in whatever's right for him, you know. I'm not particularly, of course, an outstanding tennis player, but perhaps that is the way ahead for him, you know. I'm not sure how God's running his life, obviously. What I want to say is parents did the right thing, didn't they, in a sense? As I understood the goal, they wanted him to be good at school and capable and a success in the world, so they paid for him to have tennis lessons so that he would have the right environment, uh, the right social um, uh, fellowship group. Obviously the parents weren't particularly Christian or anything like that, or well, they'd have got him into church environment, but you know. And of course, the person in, who, who makes sure their kids go to Sunday school or something is trying to get the right company so that the other kids have the same influence in their life as well. as whatever the parents value, the Christianity and so on. Well, we can learn by their example, can't we? Uh, we do the same. What am I trying to do in my recording? Uh, encourage you, open doors in the right direction that you might take. Not be the great teacher to you. I mean, I fall into that trap easily. And I should perhaps take uh, all of my recordings off <laughs> of YouTube and only put back on those that are consistent with the view in this recording. But do you see what I mean? The fatal flaw is to end up being the guru, the teacher, the way. Jesus is the fatal flaw. Instead of hearing what he said, Father, over a hundred times, how come I didn't? Realise the importance of that compared to anything else that he said. How come he says in John 17, um, I've given him your name. I'm out of here. I've finished the work that thou gavest me to do. I've just opened the door for him and that's it. I'm out of here. In some sense, you know it's for real, you should look at it. Treat God as your dad. Oh. Now I've said enough. I shouldn't be here any longer. I can carry on my way. Back with you, Heavenly Dad, with the glory I had with you before the world was. I've given them the glory that thou gavest me. I just pray that you keep them safe. You do it, not me. Well, in a sense, me, I said I'm staying with them. But I said you're with them always. That we are one. Okay, and you come back with, see, I told you the Trinity was valid. <laughs> you said it yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, there was a lot of other stuff you threw in there that so clouded the issue, I'm not sure as you got it. What you really should have got was the importance of the basic fundamental to see God as your dad, loving, heavenly, wonderful dad, is everything. And you'll look for all his goodness in your life and you'll thank him for it and your relationship with him will grow and grow. Not your relationship with me, for goodness sake. I'm out of here, I'm on my way. I'll leave you another comforter, Holy Spirit. We'll reveal these things to you. But he's so elusive, there's no way you'll see anything of himself. 
to identify with and treat as something. You ask how many people in Christianity worship the Holy Spirit? No, no, no. They worship Jesus. One or two of them worship God the Father. Almost none of them worship the Holy Spirit as their priority. In a sense, they feel they're consistent with it. They're doing study and um, they're trying to work out what's right and we're relying on the Spirit to guide us. But that's as far as it goes. Do you see the story tries to push Jesus out of the picture? We want something that's purely about God. So, says Jesus, I'm going to sanctify myself. What? I took you as God, mate. How much more sanctified could you be than that? No, no, he says, in three days I'll be perfected. You know, you got it wrong. I'm not, don't look at the picture and say, goodness, that's what I have to be, Jesus. No, no, no. You're a child of God. I'm a child of God. It's very limiting if you're going to try and learn from the other kids. I mean, in the absence of parent, we do it. Thank God for the older sister who loved and cared for you if you lost your mum. You know, thank God for the older brother who protected you when you'd lost your dad. Oh, bless him. But do you, do you see what I mean there? Um... If you don't, listen to this recording again. <laughs> Thank you, Heavenly Dad.